Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to call the September 27, 2021 regular council meeting to order and begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is the traditional unceded territory of the Katsi, Kwantlen, Maswi, and Semiamu First Nations. And I just want to read a few words out that we um, have put out through the mayor's message, but um, I think it's appropriate to do it in this setting as well. So in June of this year, the federal government passed legislation to mark September 30th, 2021 as the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. Since 2013, September 30th has been observed as Orange Shirt Day, a movement to recognize the colonial legacy of residential schools and commit to the ongoing progress process of reconciliation. And we are wearing our orange shirts today um, in order to support the new ones are black with orange for this year. So uh, the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation is an opportunity to recognize further and commemorate the colonial legacy of residential schools and to honor indigenous communities, families, and survivors. On August 3rd, 2021, the province of BC followed suit, formally recognizing September 30th as the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation in alignment with the federal government. The province did not, however, declare the day to be a statutory holiday. The City of Langley, together with QP2058 and IAFF3253, recognizes the importance of officially honoring truth and reconciliation and is committed to supporting and advancing reconciliation and Indigenous human rights. Accordingly, the city will be observing September 30th, 2021 as the day of commemoration and we will be closed for business to show our respects. In acknowledgement of truth and reconciliation, the city will also light up Douglas Park, Spirit Square Orange and hang two banners on the east entrance and west entrance of the city on Fraser Highway to show our support. I hope that you and your loved ones will take a moment to acknowledge and to reflect on September 30th. Thank you. So I am Mayor Val Vandenbroek and with me this afternoon, I have Councillor Paul Albrecht, Councillor Terry James, uh, Councillor Gil Martin, Councillor Nathan Bahal, Councillor Rudy Stortaboom, Councillor Rosemary Wallace. And our Chief Administrative Officer for staff, we have Francis Chung, Darren Leiner, Director of Corporate Services, Rick Baumhoff, our Director of Engineering, Parks and Environment, Kim Hilton, our Director of Recreation, Culture and Community Services, Kelly Kenny, our Corporate Officer, um, Deputy Chief Scott Kennedy from our Firefighters, and Beckett Zeller, our Manager of Human Resources. For any members of the public who are in attendance to watch these proceedings, welcome. And just a reminder to keep your mics and your camera turned off while you are in attendance, thank you. So adoption of the September 27th, 2021 regular agenda. Um, before we consider the adoption of the, the agenda, are there any changes or additions to the agenda? Seeing none, put forward the motion that the 20, September 27, 2021 agenda be adopted as circulated. Uh, Councillor Wallace, Councillor Sturdeboom, all those in favor, any opposed, that carries. So we are going to go into a committee of the whole, and it's a meeting that provides council the opportunity to hear input from the public and allows council a great, greater opportunity to speak to and debate specific agenda items. So uh, motion forward is that council commence the committee of the whole. I need a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Stortaboom, Councillor James, all those in favor? Any opposed, that carries. First up is bylaw 3161, a road closure bylaw. It's a by bylaw to close and remove the dedication of a portion of highway located between 5500 and 5510 Brighton Crescent. And I believe Mr. Chung, you are going to speak to this bylaw. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The city plans to close and remove uh, the road dedication of a surplus lane located between 5500 and 5510 Brighton Crescent. This will facilitate the sale of the lane to a developer who currently owns the property on either side of those of the lane. 
to allow them to develop a multifamily residential development. And this is surplusing and the city is in the positions to remove it and close it and sell it to this property, a developer. Thank you. Is there anyone in attendance at this meeting that who wishes to speak regarding bylaw 3161? Um, if so, please use the raise hand function. And I don't see anyone. Does council have any questions or comments? Councilor Sturdipum. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you all, and, and thank you for the planning team being here as well. I just want to uh, ask how this uh, was uh, advertised uh, for the general public, if they were aware. Uh, that would be uh, nice to know. I think this video will probably be on YouTube at some point, so people might be asking that question. Please. Thank you, Councilor Stoderboom. I would defer that to Ms. Kenny. Uh, yes, uh through the chair to Councillor Storterboom, uh, there was an advertisement in the, the local paper about this. And also um, if people wanted to submit written comments or to attend the meeting, they were welcome to do so. And we've received no written comments um, on this. Thank you very much. And I guess that the, uh, the next uh, item, the financial plan was uh, done in the same fashion. That is correct. Thank you again very much. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Great, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, we'll move on to item B then, bylaw 3183, 2021 to 2025 financial plan amendment number one, a bylaw to amend the 2021 to 2025 financial plan bylaw. And Mr. Light, I believe you would like to speak to this. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor and members of council. Uh, so this bylaw, um, relates to 13 items in our capital plan that we're asking for an amendment to. Um, some of these items were in the original capital plan, have been tendered and have come back higher than we anticipated. Um, some of them relate to developer contributions to uh, different projects that we want to get the expenditure authorization in order to use those development fund, developer funds. Um, and there is one item for a grant as well that uh, we are applying for uh, or received from the MIA. Um, so that's about what I wanted to tell you about. Thank you so much, Madam Mayor. Great. Thank you, Mr. Light. Um, Ms. Kenny, can you advise whether there was any correspondence that was received regarding bylaw 3183, please? Uh, Madam Mayor, there was no correspondence received. Excellent. Thank you. Is there anybody in attendance at this meeting who wishes to speak regarding bylaw 3183? If so, please use the raise hand function. I don't see anyone. So does council have any questions or comments? Uh, Councillor Albrecht. Yes, thank you. I'm just wondering with the Spirit Square rigging, uh, will that uh, be able to accommodate any future um, sound um, or speaker improvements? Uh, I know that uh, some of the sound systems have been a little lacking for some events. And I'm just wondering if uh, the uh, the motors to be replaced will facilitate uh, maybe putting some additional speakers. Thank you. Madam Mayor, I'll defer that question to, I believe maybe um, Rick might know from the park side. I believe that it, it, we're replacing the four motors that just pull up the bar that um, things can be hung on. So I'm assuming that it won't, uh, it won't be a problem, but I'll defer that maybe to Kim. Thank you, um, Councillor Albrecht through Madam Mayor. Um, yeah, the rigging will provide us the opportunity to uh, hang additional items on, on the bar. So if we um, can enhance the sound system, we certainly can from use, for using the bars there. Great, thank you. Yeah, Great thank question. you. Yeah. Thanks for the clarification. Okay, any other questions or comments for staff? Seeing none, um, motion is that committee of the whole rise and report. I need a mover and a second here, please. Uh, Councillor James, Councillor Stortaboom, all those in favor, any opposed, that carries. Adoption of the regular meeting minutes from September 13th, 2021, that the minutes of the regular meeting held on September 13th, 2021 be adopted as circulated. Any corrections? Need a mover and a seconder, please. 
Councillor Sturdivant, Councillor Albrecht, any discussion? All those in favor, any opposed, that carries. Public hearing meeting minutes from July 26, 2021. Feels like years ago um, that the minutes of the special pre-closed meeting held on July 26, 2021 be adopted as circulated. Any corrections? And any of them a seconder, please. Uh, Councillor Sturdivant, Councillor Albrecht again. All those in favor? Any opposed? It carries. It looked like you had your hand up. So. All right, business arising from the Committee of the Whole, Bylaw 3161, Road Closure Bylaw, final reading of a bylaw to remove the dedication of highway and close a portion of the road located between 5500 and 5510 Brighton Crescent, that the bylaw cited as road closure, bylaw number 3161, 2021, be read a final time. Uh, need a mover and seconder, please. Councillor Sturdivant. Uh, Councillor James, even though she's putting on lip, lip gloss, we'll, 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 set, we'll put that as a seconder. Uh, any discussion on further discussion on that? Call the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? That carries. Okay, on to bylaw 3183, 2021 to 2025 financial plan amendment number one, final reading of a bylaw to amend the 2021 to 2025 financial plan bylaw that the bylaw cited as financial plan 2021 to 2025, bylaw 2021 number 3155, amendment number one, bylaw 3183, be read a final time. Mover and a seconder, Councillor Sturdivant, Councillor Wallace, any further discussion on that? Seeing none, call the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? Okay, on to the mayor's report. Our next upcoming meeting is in October. Our next regular council meeting is October 4th, 2021. In person, council chambers at 7 p.m. And the next regular council meeting following that will be October 18th, 2021, in person, in council chambers at 7 p.m. Uh, and we now have our recreation update with Kim Hilton, our Director of Recreation, Culture and Community Services. Good evening, Madam Mayor. Can you hear me? And can yes. you see my presentation? And yes, we can see your presentation. Thank Fantastic. You. All right, so this is the update for Recreation, Culture and Community Services for September. It's a short update. Uh, we have some new classes coming on board uh, starting in October. And the first one I, I like to highlight is the Eccentric Program. It is really similar to yoga. It uh, helps to release emotional stress and body aches, muscle pain, and you're using your own body weight and just mats. It engages all the major muscle groups and it combines lengthening and strengthening exercises. This runs on Thursdays, 8.45 to 9.45 in the morning here at Tim's Community Centre. And to register, you can phone 604-514-2940. Or you can check out online at langleycity.ca under recreation. Then we also have, starting this week actually, is our Tai Chi class. Finally, it's back after our long break. Uh, it runs uh, Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Again, it's here at Tim's Community Centre. It's 11 sessions and $165. To register, please phone 604-514-2940. Happy to say that we are offering the Teen Pump Program again. This is a great opportunity uh, for youth to come and learn how to use all the equipment in our weight room. So this is geared for youth uh, 13 to 16. And by taking this course and uh, attending all the classes, it enables the youth to work out in the weight room without adult supervision and outside of youth specific time. So it's a great opportunity, um, a lot of learning. And I know a number of youth that have taken the course and found it very beneficial. So for more information or to register, you can phone 604-514-2940. I will point out that the course is on Sundays, so it's a convenient time and day for most youth to attend and a little bit quieter in the weight room as well. And happily, we have a number of uh, drop-in programs for our youth here at Tim's Community Center, uh, five days a week, Tuesdays through Saturdays. And I do want to point out that on Fridays, uh, we do have a drop-in gym. 
uh, 4 to 5.30. It does say Games Club, but that was a mistake, I think, typo. Um, and all you need to have is your Games and Track Pass. So that's $10 for the year. You get all these activities. And I have to say, particularly our Saturday night uh, teen time has been extremely popular with 40 plus uh, youth turning up. Uh, to use the gymnasium and the games room and the other rooms in the facility. So that's exciting, exciting to see the participation with the youth. And then we also have our gymnasium is back to our sports activities, not fitness classes. And so we do have a table tennis and pickleball, basketball, volleyball, and badminton, all extremely popular. Uh, you can register in advance, seven days in advance. And as um, as much as two hours prior to the program. Uh, some of these programs do book out, so we do encourage you to register in advance if you can. And to do that, you can go online at langleycity.ca or you, once again, you can phone our great reception staff here at 604-514-2940. Finally, I'd just like to promote our Parks, Recreation and Culture Master Plan update. It's currently taking place and we are in the midst of a survey and I encourage all of our community participants, partners, uh, and uh, nonprofits within our community to take part in our community survey. Uh, it is closing on October 14th, so you can scan the QR code. You can go onto our website and get the link there as well. And um, langleycity.ca is the place to connect with our survey. And that's what I have for our parks record, our parks culture record update. Thank you, parks. Great, thank you very <sighs> much, Ms. Hilton, for that great report and all the wonderful things you and the staff are doing. We're getting there slowly but surely. We're getting there, right? Um, opening up more and more counselor store to boom, and then counselor Rosemary Wallace. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Ms. Hilton, for your report. Always an excellent report telling us of all the wonderful things that you're doing with parks, recreation, and culture. Just wanting to underline the invitation that you've provided for our residents to uh, give us input. We're looking for direction, and we'd appreciate as much input as possible to determine what our strategies should be moving forward. And also wanted to double check that's uh, S centrics, not eccentrics, I'm guessing. <laughs> That's right. Okay, and that's Tai Chi, not Chai Tea? That's correct. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Councillor Wallace, go ahead, please. You're on mute. Sorry, I'm sorry, I apologize. I touched it twice and that's what happened. So I apologize for that, but um, just thank you for the report and Rudy uh, mentioning um, parts of recreation and culture master master plan already. It's a wonderful opportunity to have public input in so many areas when it comes to, you know, recreation and culture and arts. So, yeah, for sure. But I just wanted to commend um, staff and um, on the programming, um, the increase in programming, but especially for youth. It's so awesome to hear the numbers of, you know, 40 in attendance and just maybe one question to you, Kim, and you might have already, but uh, maybe just uh, the age of a youth um, for um, dropping in. Uh, yeah, we actually do it by grade. So grade six to 12. Wonderful, thank you. Excellent, okay. Any other questions or comments for Ms. Hilton before we let her go? No, nope. you're off the hook. Wonderful, thank you. All right, um, Councillor Albrecht, you have a report from Discover Langley City up next. I do, and uh, thank you. Of course, it's in your council package. I'm just gonna to touch on a few highlights. Uh, you can do your uh, more in-depth reading uh, at your leisure if you haven't already done so. So our Canada summer jobs, uh, we had a second uh, student placement uh, began in mid-September. And we had Taryn and Hannah join the team and they took on the roles of community ambassadors and marketing interns. And they worked closely with the manager of operations to attend the various events and contribute to the marketing activities for the DLC. An important component of the Canada Summer Jobs program is to provide mentorship and real life experience to support the studies of student participants. Having both students come from a marketing and communications field 
Um, these positions were very valuable experience for them, as well as giving DLC access to current trends and techniques from the BCIT programs. So it was a benefit for, for all parties involved. Uh, stakeholder visits continued to be top priority for the DLC. And uh, we've had uh, some uh, feedback and insights uh, from people who are from Alberta, some locals. Uh, during the heat wave, there was an influx of visitors seeking air conditioned rooms. Uh, sports are starting to resume and there's an increase of guests for sporting events and tournaments. Uh, throughout the pandemic, some hotels have seen consistent bookings for construction workers and a few accommodations mentioned they were sold out during the BC long, long weekend. So uh, positive improvements all the way around. Uh, we have a content production grant from Destination BC uh, of $7,500. And the DLC is working alongside a professional photographer to capture Langley City images, including restaurants, outdoor spaces, and attractions just to help raise that profile and, and give her a higher quality images to showcase our great city. Uh, the visual assets have been received, organized and select images sent to Destination BC as per the requirements. And images are currently being used by the DLC for website enhancement, newsletters, social media. And in total, there have been eight separate shooting days for and over 270 photographs added to the asset library. Uh, in terms of marketing, uh, Langley City's International Taste Bud Tour is uh, one of our most recent marketing initiatives, and it was launched July 13th. The Taste Bud Tour features restaurants offering global cuisines through an easy to navigate online restaurant directory and interactive map. The goal is to highlight the city's impressive international food scene and to encourage both locals and visitors to explore the delicious and versatile dining options available in Langley City. And we uh, encourage everyone to have a look at that because it's pretty, uh, pretty great. Um, the reset, refresh and reconnect itinerary for Langley City's uh, International Taste Bud Tour um, is uh, first pre-planned restaurant tour for people to spend the day, night in Langley City. It includes a total of six restaurant selections for three meals, two activities, and four Langley City hotel recommend, uh, recommendations for an overnight stay. So we'll have more planned in the fall. Uh, the Mobile Visitor Center, uh, this is where our uh, students uh, did their great work. Um, they provided a valuable face time with the public and a chance to hand out marketing collateral. The spin to win prize wheel is a major attraction and draws guests. It's, it's amazing how people like to spin that wheel, but it's a big hit. Uh, and uh, over the summer session, our ambassadors spoke to over 400 individuals and groups. And uh, some of the insights they gained from uh, these interactions uh, for top reasons for visiting Langley City, food and shopping, uh, the umbrellas in McBurney Plaza have become really popular on Instagram, TikTok, and many people traveled to the plaza specifically to see them. And we've even heard disappointment that they're now out, uh, been taken down. So great idea. Uh, the live music in McBurney Plaza was well received as well. We had uh, Hub Cycling do a bike uh, shop event where they provided some of their expertise, knowledge, and recommendations. And then there's uh, a number of interesting statistics that I think other people will be interested in looking at. And um, again, their planning is underway for some sessions for the fall and coming here. So that's my report. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, lots of exciting stuff going on there. I think we all like spinning that wheel because we all actually like gambling, whether we say we do or not, it's just that fun and excitement and a picture is worth a thousand words so it's good to hear that there's a professional photographer that's awesome any other comments or questions for councillor albrecht no okay great thank you for that wonderful presentation all right on to bylaws now sorry i just got an alert 
uh, bylaw 3181 Watercourse Protection Bylaw Amendment, first, second, and third reading of a bylaw to amend the Watercourse Protection Bylaw that the bylaw cited as the Watercourse Protection 2021, number 3152, Amendment 1, 2021, number 3181, be read a first, second, and third time. Need a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Sturdivant, Councillor Hall. any discussion on that? Councillor Sturdivant? Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. If it's not too much trouble, I'd sure appreciate it if staff might say a word about this to introduce it to the general public and our viewing audience. Sure, I can respond to that. Um, in essence, it's uh, to adjust the pH level of the water <clears throat> that discharges to a creek. Um, recently, Metro Vancouver increased the pH level in the drinking water supply uh, in order to address some quality issues that um, in, in the drinking water system. So uh, if there was a water main break, in, uh, not, in, not in theory, but in actual fact, um, the water quality might exceed our current bylaw into discharge into a creek. So, but our bylaw is more restrictive than the Ministry of Environment's bylaw. So this, by, this bylaw change will put our bylaw in consistent with the Ministry of Environment and, uh, and also meet uh, the limits that are the new drinking water limits. So if there was a water main break, we'd be in compliance. Thank you very much, Mr. Baumhoff. I believe that here in Langley City, we have the best quality water in the world, and I'd like to advertise that fact whenever possible. Thank you to you and your team for providing us with the best possible and for your explanation. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Okay, thank you. Any other further discussion on that? Okay, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? That carries. All right, on to administrative reports, eligible school site proposal and school site acquisition charge update. Um, and I believe Mr. Bettle, you will be speaking to this report. Thank yes, you. thank you, Madam Mayor, and uh, good afternoon. Langley Board of Education adopted an eligible school sites proposal on September 21st and referred the proposal to the city and township of Langley. In accordance with the Local Government Act, Council must either accept or reject the proposal within 60 days. The eligible school sites proposal, uh, which is attached to the staff report, identifies the need for new school sites in the district based on projected growth over the next 10 years and forms the basis of a proposed new school site acquisition charge to help offset the anticipated land costs. The table on page three of the report lists the seven new school sites required and their estimated costs. According to the proposal, no new school sites are required in the city of Langley over the next 10 years, although some upgrades to existing schools may be needed, and the school district has provided for a significant expansion of Nicomechel Elementary School in its new five-year capital plan. The proposed new school site acquisition charges shown on page three represent a 35% increase over existing rates, but in absolute terms and in the context of the total charges payable for multifamily residential developments are relatively insignificant as shown on page four. Although the city did reject a previous eligible school site proposal in 2013, on the basis that it unfairly imposed charges on development in Langley City. Staff are recommending that Council accept the current proposal as it is a modest increase and previous experience suggests that the Ministry of Education is unlikely to support a request for separate school site acquisition charges for the city. The second uh, part of the recommendation in the report is intended to seek a commitment in principle from the school district to invest in building upgrades in existing city schools required to meet the needs of future growth. Um, that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Great, thank you, Mr. Bettle. Um, 
Councillor Stortopum. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Mr. Beto, for your report. Um, although it, it may be frustrating in principle to consider that we'll be paying, well, developers will be paying for a new school acquisition site when actually there's no school, no new schools planned for us. Um, I'm willing to accept the recommendation that this is an affordable consideration. However, I would like to remind Council that it is an opportunity to meet with uh, the Minister and staff, as we have done, to advise them that uh, we do have some older elementary schools that will be needing upgrades and that we're still waiting to have a high school that used to be in our city but no longer is within our borders. So it's an opportunity for the conversation around what we have and what we want uh, moving forward. Thank you again for your report, Mr. Beto. I support your recommendation and thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Councillor Albrecht, go ahead. Yes, thank you. And I, I want to say thanks to staff for preparing this report. Uh, I have to say that I'm pretty disappointed with uh, our school district and not making a commitment to provide some funding for long overdue upgrades to some of our schools. Uh, we're, we're showing growth potential, uh, the, very similar to the Township of Langley. Uh, the Township of Langley is looking like they're getting approximately $16 million worth of uh, new or upgrades to schools, and uh, there's no commitment here to city schools that, that, that I see, at least not in paper, not in writing. And so I'm a little disappointed with that. I'm sure that with COVID uh, and uh, um, health concerns, there should be uh, ven ventilation upgrades required and so on. So I'd like to see a bit more commitment from our school district in what they're gonna do for our city schools, our city students and our residents uh, for now and in the future. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Pahal. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. And I am gonna be supportive of the recommendation from uh, staff. I mean, I, I think with the province, um, they've made it pretty clear last time that they're not interested in changing the school site acquisition or as far as splitting in our district. As Councillor Albrecht said, it is an antiquated system and it's built on this idea of growth and sprawl. And what we're trying to do in the region is actually you know, build um, growth in existing neighborhoods. So this policy goes in the face of sustainability and I would say the Clean BC plan uh, because it encourages new school sites on Greenfield. So I think for, for me, this would be a perfect thing for us to advocate to our MLA on um, to get the school site acquisition program expanded, not just for Greenfield schools, but for existing schools. And it's not just Langley City. Uh, there's challenges in Vancouver and Surrey, all throughout Metro Vancouver of schools that need to be retrofitted. So, um, and I think this is probably something we should bring up with our uh, liaison with the school board. I think Councillor Wallace may be on that. I think that's an excellent opportunity to bring that up. And maybe as a school board and as a city, we can advocate through our MLA and through the Minister of Education. So I look forward to that as a course of action. Great, thank you. Uh, Councillor Wallace, go ahead. Um, thank you, uh, Stuart and Nathan, to um, the rest of everybody else. Uh, Terry, um, Councillor, Terry James also sits on the liaison um, committee as well. And for sure, we should bring this up with the, the school district. I know um, the formula is, I know it's kind of miscued, but uh, I know when we're fighting to save um, HD sec sec secondary, um, we, we couldn't understand um, the formula. And so one of the reasons why we, lost uh, the high school, but yeah, we can definitely bring it up liaison committee. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, I just have a quick question. My understanding is it's averaged out. Is that is that correct? Now, when, when they're looking at the numbers for, um, what is it called? Sorry. I just I just read it here somewhere and now I've lost it. So when they're they're doing the anticipated cost, do they factor in actual the actual amount of city residents compared 
to township residents or did they just look at a broad speculation? That's what I'm kind of wondering about, like how many city kids are going to township schools right now? And then I would assume in the long run, if we want to do repairs, then township people are going to kick in as well. Um, so I guess it's tit for tat on, on the amount, but I'm kind of wondering about that number, how you get to that number. Uh, Madam Mayor, the, the number is um, uh, calculated on a district-wide basis. However, that's informed by um, further information from the two municipalities on where uh, the development is expected to occur. And then for different types of development, um, there are different um, enrollment rates or different rates of students anticipated per unit of population. So whether it's an apartment or a townhouse or a single family dwelling, et cetera. So they don't take the actual numbers that are enrolled or do they currently? They do, um, um, uh, Madam Mayor, they do uh, factor in experience with enrollment at existing schools um, and how that relates to the housing types and development in those areas. Um, so okay. they are taking that into account in these uh, projections. Okay, excellent. Thank you. I just needed to clarify that in my own mind. So thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, no, staff has done an excellent job with this. Um, I think it's something that we definitely need to work on in the future um, going forward. Um, does Is census taken into account at all? Do you know? Because the new one's going to be coming out. So I would think now would be a good time to get a hold of that maybe and use that. And, um, and immigration, that would be my other question. Does immigration factor into that as well? Madam Mayor, the um, of course, the census data forms uh, the basis for the future growth projections. Growth. Okay. So that's the starting point. Um, and then the school district has worked with city and township staff. Uh, on developing the projections, which are also based on, you know, region-wide projections of growth for these areas as well, so. Okay, great. I just know we're supposed to be getting large quantities of immigration in the next couple of years, and it's gonna expand. So I wanna make sure that we capture those, those numbers are captured as well. So thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Councillor Wallace. Thank you to the mayor. I've always had a hard time with the projection of enrollment. And I look at um, just the way people are moving into different housing forms now, as far as, you know, it used to be a single detached home and a lot of people are moving into um, townhomes and even apartments, people are, or condos and people are raising their, their um, you know, families and condos. And so I always have found it hard when they try to do the 10 year projected enrollment and then break it up. And then another point, um, I hear everybody's points, but in regards to Langley Secondary High School, I think we're, we are fortunate to, even though that's not in the city, um, it is blocks away from the city. And I believe probably half of the students that attend Langley Secondary School um, are from the city. And that was on the, you know, at one time about five years ago, the decision to possibly not have that sky high school anymore. That's another school that had to be saved. So um, just, you know, and they've done, they've done amazing upgrades and it is serve, serving um, Langley City students in many ways. So I just wanted to put that up there as well. Thank you. Great, thank you. Okay, I will, any other questions for Mr. Beto? Thank you very much for that, for that clarification, appreciate it. Okay, I will read the motion now. Um, motion is that council one, accept the school district number 35 eligible school sites proposal adopted by Langley Board of Education at its meeting on September 21st, 2021, and two, request that the school site acquisition acquisition charges collected in the city of Langley be utilized to fund capital improvements of school facilities in the city of Langley. A mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Bahal, Councillor James, any further discussion on that? 
Okay, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? Any opposed? Okay, uh, next up, UBCM Asset Management Planning Program grant application. Uh, that council endorses the UBCM Asset, Asset Management Planning grant application for building property condition assessment. Two, that city staff will provide overall grant management and three that the remaining project budget will be funded within the city of Langley's 2021 capital plan. I need a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Bahal, Councillor Wallace, any discussion on that? Okay, all those in favor, any opposed? That carries. All right, on to correspondence. Uh, we received some correspondence from uh, one uh, rebuilding the village of Linton, BC, challenge to all other local governments, uh, to the regional district of Mount Waddington. Um, so does council wish a motion for receipt? Yep. Okay, beautiful. Um, that was Councillor Wallace and Councillor Sturgeon. All those in favor, that carries. Okay, on to new business. Motion to hold a closed meeting that the council meeting immediately following this meeting be closed to the public as the subject matter being considered relates to items which comply with the following closed meeting criteria specified in section 90 of the community charter. One, a part of a council meeting may be closed to the public if the subject matter being considered relates to or is one or more of the following. K, negotiations and related discussions respecting the proposed provision of a municipal service that are at their preliminary stages and that in the view of the council could reasonably be expected to harm the interests of the municipality if they were held in public. Two, a part of a council meeting must be closed to the public if the subject matter being considered relates to one or more of the following. B, the consideration of information received and held in confidence relating to negotiations between the municipality and a provincial government or the federal government or both, or between a provincial government or the federal government or both, and a third party. We are in a second, please. Councillor Wallace, Councillor Stortaboom, any discussion? All those in favor, carries. Motion that the meeting adjourn. Uh, Councillor Wallace, Councillor Stortaboom, all those in favor, any opposed? Okay, so we have concluded the regular council meeting and we have a separate meeting link for the closed council meetings.